Okay, as for where we're going to start uh, with this little short discussion that we're going to have uh, regarding personal finance and investing and economics and whatnot, right? Or current economic systems or system um, that we're deciding to function in, right? Uh, the first thing you got to keep in mind is that, uh, or basically the way, the one thing I keep in mind when it comes to talking about economics and personal finance and investing with people is that when the discussion of personal finance comes into play, what's really meant uh, when someone asks me a question where, where, you know, what my opinion is, where they should invest their money is, is that what they're really asking me is, how are they gonna become financially independent, right? How are they gonna become free of debt, okay? To be able to do whatever it is they wanna do, right? How are they gonna basically live as free human beings, right? Without the burden of day-to-day -day expenses overwhelming them, okay? That's, that's the way I look at it when it comes to talking about economics and personal finance, okay? And as soon as we think about it on that level, and as soon as I start thinking about it on that level, there's five pieces of info, five bits of info that I, have, that I can give you or that I give people regarding personal finance and how they can become financially independent, where they can maintain, okay? The first, the first rule for economics for me, anyway, is that there are multiple first rules because personal finance is very personal, right? It's really, you know, my financial needs may be completely different than fi your financial needs, right? So keeping that in mind, that there are multiple number one rules for different types of people, for different types of investment decisions. These are the top five things that in conversations I tell people to really focus on and don't really think about investing in anything else unless they've invested in the following five areas, okay? First and foremost, uh, if you want financial independence, you have to be healthy. You have to be physically healthy, you have to be mentally healthy, you have to be emotionally healthy, okay? That's my first bit of advice to anyone that asks me how they can, you know, where they should invest their time and energy and money on, okay? The first thing I do is I look at them and I ask them if they're feeling healthy, if they're physically healthy, if they're mentally healthy, if they need to, further their studies right if they're emotionally healthy if they're if they're not under stress where they need to take some time off right if they're physically ill right if they haven't taken their care of their bodies with certain organ organs are shutting down or misfiring and the body's reacting by through symptoms right if they're not feeling physically well, I first thing I tell them is to take care of the physical bodies, right? Either start exercising more or start eating healthy. And eating is a huge part of investing, right? Mental well-being is extremely important, right? Mental growth is extremely important, right? Because if, you know, when people are stuck in a rut, one of the best things you can do to get out of that rut financially emotionally whatever it might be is to start learning new things right so learning mental well-being mental health is extremely important and emotional health goes hand in hand with that right if you're overwhelmed then you're not making the best decisions that you can right because you're under stress so when you're under stress, there's a time constraint on the decisions you have to make. You end up making mistakes and those end up costing you a lot, right? Financially and otherwise, right? So, you know, if someone is under stress, the first thing I say is, you know, take a vacation. It might be a week, might be a few days, might be a few months if they can afford it, right? If they've already worked towards building a certain amount of financial freedom, okay? So my first bit of advice to anyone, um, that's looking to 
become financially stable is to take care of your health okay extremely extremely important the second bit of advice that i have is uh, is to take into consideration the the time frame that you have in mind okay and i can't emphasize this more because certain people when they want returns they want dividends right they want it immediately they want it within a week so they invest their time and to be able to get returns within a week some people do it for a month some people do a year some people five years some people look out 10 15 25 30 retirement time right 50 years 40 years 30 years down the road right so when you're talking about um, investing you have to keep in mind the time frame that you're willing to wait to have dividends paid out to you right to have your investment start giving you some returns right so keep that in mind the time frame varies depending again on a personal level the time frame that i might be looking at right for me a month a year a few years handful of years is short term five to ten years is medium term 10 to 15 20 years is long term right for some people they don't think that far right they're only interested in maybe the immediate future right and those are short-term investments and that time frame that type of investment varies depending on you know longer term investments right in general shorter term is um is more risky than longer term right so consider the time frame that you're you want to invest in and we're going to talk a little a fair bit more about this in the next couple of videos as well right we're going to break this down a little bit further especially regarding time because we you know we put out a video um sort of playing around with a little bit of ratios and mathematics and taking a look at uh quantitatively mathematically how the perception of time may vary depending on your age right and we're going to expand on that in one of the, one of the videos that we're going to put out uh, for this playlist okay for this personal finance economics playlist so you know those are my first two bits of advice the first one my number my first two number one rules make sure you're healthy and make sure you appreciate your timeline right the next three bits of advice um, that i have and one of the things that comes up um, with a lot of people is uh, if they need financial advice it means that they're in general blowing their budget and what that means is basically you're living beyond your means if you're living beyond your means then you're basically living as a slave because you're accumulating debt and that debt has to be service you must well not must you don't necessarily have to with certain systems right but there's a certain burden being put on you right so if you're living beyond your means it means you don't have as much freedom as you would if you live within your means right it means you're blowing your budget so what i end up telling people is is to take a look at their expenses and manage their expenses because that's usually how people blow their budgets okay is by over they're spending too much right and the best way to manage your budget manage your expenses is to come up with a to-do list and that we've talked a fair bit about this in a couple of previous videos uh, one of them in uh, uh, for mathematics where we talked about how to create a to-do list and a to-do list is extremely important when it comes to finances huge 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 right so if you want to know how to create a to-do list which is basically your first step towards creating a budget right uh, take a look at that video and we also did a video for um, math in real life where we talked about mathematics of food and farming where we talked to Marv uh, and Vanessa and Marv showed us how they create a sort of a flow chart of uh, how their their business cycle is set up where uh, specifically when it comes to farming what things they need to do to make sure that they're going to get 
crops at the end of the season, right? They can take care of everything, right? So to, to, a to-do list and a flowchart sort of go hand in hand. There's certain things you need to do before you can do other things, right? So you have to organize yourself. And if you want to know sort of, you know, if you're having a hard time managing uh, your expenses, take a look at those two videos. It'll give you a pretty good idea of how to create a to-do list and how to put a flow chart together and how to do things in a certain order just to make sure, you know, things are being done properly, okay? Um, the next advice, the fourth bit of advice uh, that I have for people when it comes to personal finance, specifically when it comes to them trying to invest in, in something, right? Maybe starting their own business or taking their funds and their energy and investing in a project. Maybe for a company, for a corporation, maybe for a cooperative, right? Maybe just for the community, maybe for the family, maybe for themselves, right? Is um, if, if they have the means to build a good network, right which basically means to have people you can communicate either online or sitting down um, at a coffee shop or over tea or going for a run a bike ride or or a walk right set up some kind of network where you can bounce off of your ideas your investment ideas with other people right forums the internet is amazing for this right it doesn't have to be in real life right not that the internet is not that's real life as well right but it doesn't have to be in person it could be online it could be virtual as well because when that happens when you're bouncing off ideas when you have a network set up the one thing you do is if you have an idea and you share that idea and that's one of the things about sharing which is absolutely amazing you get a lot of feedback coming in right so if you're thinking about doing something if you share your idea if other people have done have tried what you're trying to do right they may have pointers for you to how to improve uh, what you want to do they may you know give you advice on what to avoid right that maybe took them down because any idea that you may have uh, in large part you know has already been had it is not ideas that are that are unique to us it's the execution it's if you can take an idea and make it realize, right? Make it happen. And that's why a network is extremely important because what you can do is share your ideas and get feedback, right? And the other thing you can do is reach out to your network and see what other people have tried and what has worked for them, right? Because one thing we do as human beings, um, we learn much faster through mistakes than doing things right right it's very weird but it's not if we do end up doing things right all the time where we learn new things right it's when we make a mistake is when we learn new things and how to improve whatever it is that we're trying to do and if we can learn from other people's mistakes then we're way better off for it right because learning from mistakes from five people you'll learn a lot more than learning mistakes mistakes from just one person from yourself right and the repercussions of learning mistakes that other people have made is way less than repercussions of mistakes that you may make okay so the fourth bit of advice i have for people is uh, to set up some kind of network where you can bounce off ideas okay learn grow share okay um the fifth you know advice that i have and this is mainly uh, for people who are younger, uh, youth coming out of high school in general or university, okay? Or, you know, people that I've worked with, students that I've worked with that decide not to continue on with their education and they just want to go out there and live, maybe travel or maybe work, right? Um, the advice I have for any youth, anyone that wants to get in, get a get an appreciation of what it means to manage your finances and to be financially independent and to understand our current economic system is to get into the workforce as soon as possible or to start your business as soon as possible now traveling is amazing 
And for sure, if you want to travel and learn from traveling, stuff like this is fine and dandy. But make sure you're not a permanent tourist if you're traveling all the time. If you have a, if you already have, you know, if you already have the funds to travel for multiple years uh, without having to worry about your expenses, then that's okay. But keep in mind that traveling by not having to work in certain areas that you're going, you're a permanent tourist. You're not really getting a feel of what the societies have to go through wherever it is that you're traveling, right? So even if you're traveling on a long-term basis, it's a pretty good idea to do some work and learn the different economic systems that are available to you, right? Either locally, within your country, nationally, um, may it be continent-wise or globally, right? If you're traveling, take a look around different economic systems, and sometimes that means working in those systems, right? So if you're youth, if you're graduating, if you're uh, deciding to, you know, you've learned enough material to be able to function within our society, then get into the workforce as soon as you can. And if you're, you know, once you work somewhere, if you've, feel like you've maximized everything you've learned from that job and you've gotten the most out of that job that you can and you think if it's time financially that you have the means to be able to go seek out another job where you can learn more don't be afraid to do that right don't burn your bridges don't walk into your boss's office and kick down the door and say i quit you guys suck you know if you want to move on to a different type of job keep those doors open right because you never know sometimes you may have to go back you know you don't know what the future holds sometimes you may need that safety net those ne that network that connection for you to fall back on to be able to have a job during hard times if you need to or if you want to bounce off ideas from them right so never burn your bridges or very seldom burn your bridges okay as far as uh, starting your own business goes uh, if you are planning to start your own business, make sure you're not overextended. Make sure you don't borrow a ton of money and go into debt either financially or through favors where you're putting all your eggs in one basket. And if you know the project that you're trying to start doesn't work out, you're going to be in debt and servitude for a number of years, right? Because that's a number of years where you could have been accumulating capital having a rate of return instead of you know blowing your expenses you're not being able to balance your budgets because you have you have to service some kind of debt right so if you're um, trying to start up a business uh, make sure you do it slowly okay make sure you do it slowly because um, uh, one of the you know there's two things that uh, are the number one cause of people uh, not being successful uh, declaring bankruptcy for for their business one of them is they run out of funds right they don't have enough money to continue the business right even though if the business may be growing they don't have enough funds to be able to see them over that hump where they're in the black right where they able they're able to maintain the business and actually have some returns coming in right that's why people go out and sell part of their business okay uh, to be able to have enough funds to make them go over that hump and another reason that people uh, or corporations companies or businesses fail uh, is because they're not able to meet the demand right the company grows too fast they can't meet the demand the company collapses and not suffer the business model collapses and not itself okay so those two things are really dependent on you knowing uh, the next step coming up if you're uh, if you're planning on starting your own business okay but ser seriously don't go into use that initially um, for the first few projects you're going to do anyway okay so those are you know the five bits of advice that I have for people uh, the health is huge maintaining a good health is is huge because the number one cause of people going into bankruptcy, uh, they may be, you know, just making ends meet or extremely wealthy. I've seen a lot of people.
people that are very, very well off, right? When health concerns hit them, right? When their health starts deteriorating, their funds deplete extremely fast and they're not able to generate more revenue and their finances completely collapse. Health is the number one reason. Uh, ill health is the number one reason why people uh, become financially unstable where their finances basically collapse, right? Where they go into bankruptcy, where, where they lose everything, right? So it's extremely important to maintain uh, good health, uh, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Uh, if you haven't done that, uh, the first bit of advice I have for you is uh, make sure that you're healthy, okay? Uh, invest in yourself first. May it be eating properly, exercising, taking time off, learning whatever it is you need to learn to be able to progress in life, whatever you need to do, okay? Um, so that's five bit of advice I have uh, for anyone. Before we proceed any further into... Um, the next stuff that we're going to talk about, which is, um, you know, some of the notes I have in these uh, uh, in these booklets, and we're going to bring up the pen and paper, I believe, for the next subject, uh, next topic that we're going to talk about, and I think we'll we'll tackle uh, the time the time factor in um, uh, these five bit, bits of advice that we should. You know, you should consider before thinking about investing anywhere uh, or thinking about where you should be investing your money and your time and your energy on, right? So let's take a look at the time factor and uh, see how we can visualize this and how that plays into our current economic system or current economic systems, 